negotiation window in your marriage and family and work and ask for what you really want. It's Ask Dr. Phil and Robin Day, and we've been talking about a lot of different things, one of which is what our first couple, Trey and Amanda, should do about him planning a bachelor party in a strip joint right before they get married. Now, Robin and Amanda say, that's eh, not okay. I sent them back to the green room to do a little negotiating. So, guys, how's it going back there? We're debating. Yeah, when I saw you last time, you were just beginning and you were kind of leaning over and had your hand on his leg. Now your arms are crossed. It's, it's not going real good in here for the, for the men of the world, Dr. Phil. <laughs> All right, you, you guys keep working on it and we'll check back in. Okay. okay. All right. Now, Cara and John, our next guest, are expecting their first child in February and they want to know if their dog's behavior is any indication of what kind of mom and dad they're going to be. I'll let you decide. Take a look. Our dog, Amelie, is a 22-month-old Weimaraner. This dog is out of control. I'm blown away about the amount of damage the dog has done in our lives. Shoes, videos, books. The couch, futon mattress, and cover. Chairs, coffee table, end table. The mattress that we sleep on, the pillows, the blankets, the Tupperware. Dog beds. My makeup, and even our vinyl flooring in our kitchen. Bad dog. No. Car and I have a baby on the way in four months. How are we going to raise kids if we can't control the dog? I'll admit it, my husband and I should be the guilty party here because we didn't put her in puppy obedience when she was little. Car and I argue quite a bit about how to discipline her, so I'm actually kind of scared about raising a kid. I kind of let things go, whereas John is more in her face. No, Amelie, bad dog. My greatest fear is that we'll raise a spoiled, rotten kid like we did with the dog. Amelie's been diagnosed with separation anxiety, so she chews things up during the day to punish us for leaving her alone. Amelie! Amelie! One time we were going out, and I put some enchiladas in the oven. By the time we returned, she had opened the oven at 325 degrees, pulled out the enchiladas, and licked the tray clean. We just about reached our limit with her. Dr. Phil, if we can't discipline our dog, how are we going to discipline our baby? Now, this has been a really good little pilot study for you guys, yeah. right? Yeah, yes. I'd say so. And because one of the things you have to do when you get a dog is you have to socialize the dog because they don't know the boundaries, they don't know the rules, they don't know what they're supposed to do and not do, so you have to socialize them just like you have to socialize children. So if this is a practice for the child, what do you think the impact of the inconsistency is? It, it's a really good indication of what, what we might be like, although I guess it's good that we screwed up on the dog, <laughs> not a child. You guys have been inconsistent, right? Yeah. yeah, my biggest concern is that we're gonna confuse the child because she's very, she's very loose and doesn't discipline, and I'm very strict. And we have to find something in the middle, otherwise the kid's gonna be confused. Like the dog. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Your dog is on medication for separation anxiety? Yeah. <laughs> it's not working either. <laughs> You couldn't have screwed this dog up anymore if you had tried. <laughs> the dog's just like going paws up over there. <laughs> I mean, he's eating your furniture, and you're saying, oh, don't be hard on him. Well, it, it gets to be too much. I mean, I don't know where to start, you know? Look, first off, you picked a dog that experts say must be companioned all the time and that they need expert and firm training very early in their lives. Makes sense. So you <laughs> choose that breed. Yeah. She chose the breed. <laughs> she liked how they looked. Yeah, you liked how they look, and then you leave it at home all day by itself alone, and so it eats the furniture. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, it's, um, and then you're inconsistent in what training you do give it, so it doesn't know whether it's supposed to eat the furniture or not, so it just eats the floor. <laughs> now, that's not all dogs. Oh, I'm getting so nervous. Well, we just, we, we just got a new puppy, okay? We just, we just got a, a, yes. a new puppy, 
and, and you can train these dogs, and, and you can do it early. We have a little puppy named Maggie that we got from the shelter. So let's see the Maggie tape. Hey, Buster. Hey, this is Maggie, this is our new pupster. We got her from the shelter. We've had her now for a month. And she is the smartest dog ever. Good dog. Too smart for her own good, actually. She comes to the studio with me every day. He's always been kind of a softy when it comes to discipline. That is a scurrilous accusation. I'm very consistent with my discipline. I make sure I'm on her. I know where she is at all times. Let go of the leash. What you have to do is just make a noise when she's biting you, like on your hand. And boy, she doesn't like it. If you catch her chewing something, she'll like chew it, and then you swat, and she pulls back, and then she goes like she's gonna chew it again, but she just lays her nose on there and looks at you out of the corner of her eye. <laughs> she's been really good, though. I think she's only had like one or two accidents. And it's really our fault because, I mean, she'll come and tell you, but if everybody's busy, then she can't wait. Yeah, how long is trained? Well, she, she goes to the front door and sits there and waits to go yeah. out. She's so smart. She's a cutie pie, isn't she? Okay. What, what makes the pups and, and dogs enjoyable is if they're trained yeah. and, and disciplined so they companion you instead of terrorize you. And isn't the same thing true with children? Yeah. If children know where the boundaries are and they know what's appropriate and they know they take some pride in themselves and, and they can predict the consequences of their actions, then they're joyous and joyful and they're absolutely delightful. If you guys don't learn from what's happened with this dog and do the same thing with the child, it will be exponentially worse. I mean, this is a great experiment for you guys that you've, you've violated the principles of the dog. I mean, the breed has characteristics, you ignored those. Children have needs if you ignore those. If you're inconsistent, children are like, what, way smarter than dogs. <laughs> so they're gonna look at you guys and immediately see the inconsistency mm -hmm. and they'll divide and conquer and play both ends against the middle. Right. You've gotta immediately get that dog seriously trained, but they gotta train you guys too. Because if they take the dog and they're consistent and train the dog and then you take it home and you're inconsistent, you can undo everything they've already done. You guys have to negotiate a plan you can both live with. Right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. How long till the baby? Four months. You gotta get started right now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take you, her to a doggy boot camp. You, you do, you need to take the dog and the dog may need to be somewhere for like six weeks. Mm -hmm with a, a really specialized trainer, but this is a good example of what'll happen with the child if you don't do something about it. All right, next, a couple with, what? Oh, is she here? Maggie's here? Oh. <laughs> thanks. Thank you, thank you. Don't let her know. There's the pup. That's the pup. You a good dog? Good dog? There goes your makeup. <laughs> now she's got, now she has makeup on her nose. <laughs> All right, next, a couple with full-time jobs, two small children who want to know if Robin and I made time for date nights when our boys were young. We'll talk about that when we come back. Black pup. Plus, he wants his bachelor party at a strip club. His fiance says no way. We'll check in on their backstage negotiation when we come back. Well, today my wife Robin is here helping me answer some of your questions. We get thousands of emails of parents with young children wanting to know how to find time for themselves and for each other. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute, but we've got something else going on. Our first guests today are soon to get married. <laughs> I, I, that's certainly the plan. So let's go back to the green room and check in with Trey and Amanda. Have you guys found any middle ground at all? <laughs> what have we done? Very little. Have you guys come up with any compromise at all? He's very adamant about his friends wanting some alone male bonding time. Well, you don't object to that, do you? Oh, no, no, absolutely not. I just object to the naked women. 
and Trey, are the naked women just a, a must-have? No, not no. They're not for me. That's <laughs> that's just the friends are going to be really adamant about having oh. that now. Okay. Uh, uh, are the friends married? Are your fr are your are your friends married? <laughs> Some of them are. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. About, and... Probably about half. Probably about half. Have the other half been married and now they're not? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, sir. No. Well, is there a place you can go do some male bonding where everyone keeps their clothes on? Think of some other things you can do. A poker game, bird hunting. Um, a hunting trip. That's a good idea. A hunting trip. Yeah, a hunting I trip. Like that. Trey, work with me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, Dr. Phil. We're this... gonna have to just find something else to do because she just she's not giving it all on this. Okay, we'll do some more figuring and we'll check back with you. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys, come on, stay with it. All right, our next guest, Don and Brad, want to know if Robin and I made time for date nights when our sons were young. Take a look. My husband Brad and I have been happily married for four years and we have two children, Summer and Harrison. Both my wife and I work about 50 hours a week. Brad and I need to find a happy medium between finding time for each other and finding time to spend with our children. But right now, the kids are eating up all of our time. We're having struggles figuring out how to manage our time. We tend to pick spending time with the kids versus the time we would spend alone. Harrison is asleep. And Summer's watching her movie. She's in her routine, so I think we're okay. I want to make sure that I nurture the relationship with my wife as well as with my children. Robin and Dr. Phil, what suggestions do you have for Brad and I to spend time together and spend time with our kids? I think one of the biggest mistakes that parents make is when you stop being friends and lovers because you started being moms and dads. The greatest gift you can give your children is to really take care of the relationship between their mom and dad. Because happy parents raise happy children. Mm -hmm. Do you like going out? I do, yeah, very much Like, so. what do you like to do? Got strip clubs and... <laughs> uh, no, 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 that's, that was the other guy. All right, sorry. I don't want to have to go back to the green room. You don't want to go to the green room? I don't, I don't know. What do you like to do? <laughs> what, what do you like to do when you go out? Uh, you know, dinner. Dinner is great. Um, anything that... A movie. Actually, we loved staying at home, so we didn't actually go out a lot, but we did want to have just our time together. So we would, on certain nights, put the boys to bed a little earlier, and I would fix our favorite meal, and we just tr truly focused on each other at home. And then we were just had the best of both worlds. Yeah, but we went out some. We did. I took you out that time, yeah, remember? <laughs> was dating. Uh, see, it was our date. <laughs> Now, see, that was at home, though. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. That, that, that's okay. at home. That's how I'm looking. He's like, oh, but are we going out? Go. Maybe we're dressed yeah, we to go. Yeah, we were going out. We Actually, going that's out. the way we sit around the house all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to really make a threshold decision to not feel guilty about tending to your relationship. And I promise you, you will do better with the children the next day if you've had a break and gotten out and had gone to dinner where you don't have to cut somebody else's meat. <laughs> I mean, isn't that what you're looking for? You've got to give yourself permission to not feel guilty about this. Now, there, uh, there's a restaurant called O. Oh, it's the new dining hotspot in Greenville, South Carolina. And they have agreed to wine and dine you guys once a week for the next month. Wow. Okay? Now, just to make sure you don't check it out, each time we're going to send a limo to pick you up <laughs> and take you over there and go to dinner and make sure you get out and have a date. All right, next, the parents of a two-and-a-half-year-old want to know how to stop the nightmares their son is having about me. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll this. be right back. Connor's nightmares started about two and a half months ago. Dr. Phil gives me in his well, He told us that there are two Dr. Phil's. The brown Dr. Phil is the nice Dr. Phil. The blue Dr. Phil is the not nice Dr. Phil. To purchase tapes or transcripts of your favorite Dr. Phil show, log on to drphil.com or call 866-4-DR-PHIL. That's 866-437-7445.
dates. Ask Dr. Phil and Robin Day, and she's been implying that I didn't take her out on dates when we were first married. I took you out on dates? Well, it was like all you could eat, restaurants. <laughs> Yeah, you took me. Yeah, okay. and that's why, and that's why we went there because you are a chow hound. <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> she that's is true. a chow hound. I'll tell you. All right, now I know I can be a scary guy, but when young children start having nightmares about me, something's wrong. My next guest, Mitch and Heather, want to know how to stop their two and a half year old son Connor from having nightmares about monsters and well, me. Take a look. My two and a half year old son Connor has a problem, Dr. Phil, that only you can help him with. He has nightmares that you, Dr. Phil, come into his room. And he gives me a headache. <laughs> Connor's nightmares started around the time we brought our daughter home from the hospital about two and a half months ago. Come here. Connor also Come thinks here. that there's a monster under his bed or in his closet. We have this little ritual. I'll get the monster spray. Well, we spray monster spray. They spray it out of my bed. And we have a chance. And we'll say, monsters, monsters, go away. Monsters don't like monster spray. Our monster spray is actually Glade Air Freshener. And at this point, we've gone through so much, I'm wondering if we should buy stock. Now, on top of being afraid of monsters, he thinks that Dr. Phil is in his room putting him in headlocks. I get to get the stupid duper monster spray with the Dr. Phil. He told us that there are two Dr. Phil's. There's the brown Dr. Phil, who is the nice Dr. Phil. He lives in the blue house of mama. There's a blue Dr. Phil, which is the not nice Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil, what can we do to convince Connor that there are no monsters and that you won't visit him and put him in headlocks anymore? <laughs> All right, now, first off, he started having these nightmares about the time little sister started coming into the yes. house, right? Yes, he did. Do you think that's got anything to do with this? Help me out here, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd like to think that. Um, I watch your show all the time, and he sits and watches it with me, and he knows. He's like, there's Dr. Phil, you know, and he's just fine with that. 2.30 in the morning, comes in, Dr. Phil. Was he ever have a nightmare about you? Uh, no, no, not yeah. yet. <laughs> hey, seriously, what's going on is he's probably really threatened by the new baby coming in. Not that he doesn't love her and thinks she's wonderful, but all of a sudden, she's taking a lot of attention. Okay, and then there's also a time in the day where you sit down and probably say, okay, be quiet. You do say that, don't you? Most of the time. Yeah, okay, because you got to like, watch the Dr. Now. Phil show, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so little sister's in there crowding him out. Now here comes Dr. <laughs> Phil crowding him out. I got